Hello, everyone. I am the last speaker, so it's nice to know I'm the only thing standing between you and the bar. Um, but thank you very much for everyone being here. I'm going to kick this off with a question. Uh, how many here are doing what they love? Don't be shy. Raise your hands. Wow, lots of happy people. And if you're miserable people, good. You're in good company. Uh, for me, it took me a long time to figure out what it is that I, that I love. But let me give you a brief introduction. I'm Saurabh, the CEO and co-founder of Docuvo. It's an early stage startup, and we're building a friendly and accessible cloud filing platform designed for your workflow, really focusing on the reading and collaboration experience. Now, this is my first startup. And let me tell you, there is a fine line between being an entrepreneur and being unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the most challenging periods of my life, for sure. Uh, you're, I'm constantly thinking about it. There's new problems to deal with. There's unknown unknowns. There's no money, initially. Uh, hopefully, that will change soon. Uh, there's stress for your friends and family who never quite understand what it is that you're doing. There's a steep price for mistakes. But honestly, I've never been happier. So let me take you, give you some background. I, I too, came from corporate background. I was working for five years in corporate law. And things were going good, I guess. I was working for a magic circle firm. For a couple of them, I was in an area that I enjoyed. I was working with really smart and ambitious people, people that I was really learning from. There was a clear path ahead of me that I can rise up through the ranks, almost like Highlander. And uh, there, there was a lot, a lot of room to develop, a lot of travel. But the problem was I wasn't sure what I was developing into. The, there was, I never really quite fit into that culture, I always felt, and I felt like I was adapting a lot to fit into that environment and that attitude. And I wasn't sure if me questioning those was a good thing or a bad thing. And so in the midst of that internal monologue, uh, I had a really random opportunity to go work abroad, uh, Libya of all places. Uh, now this is after the war, not because of the war. Um, so it was a really unique opportunity and I was we're going to be acting as a legal consultant for one of the largest private companies in the region, working with advising on joint ventures uh, for international brands looking to enter the Libyan market, so like BP, Shell, really big brands. And it was also an opportunity for me to learn other options within law, uh, re for me to re-energize myself and really expose myself to a really foreign environment, environment I had no, no connection with. So I went and I met some really amazing people really wonderful people, did some work that I'd never done before. Like my role eventually evolved into very commercial, doing feasibility studies, market studies, due diligence reports, fun stuff. But things I'd never done before, and I, I just couldn't believe how much I was enjoying it. Uh, the thing with the Libyan market is it was a blank canvas. You can just go in with any idea, identify an opportunity, carve out a new opportunity. You were almost disrupting, very similar to being in a startup. And it was something I enjoyed so much. It was so much fun. It was so exciting. The problem was Libya was too exciting, so I decided to come back to UK, and I went back into law, but this time with a new sense of purpose. Uh, I knew I, I needed a change. I knew I wanted to do my own thing. I knew I wanted to do a startup, and I was brimming with ideas. The problem was I had too many ideas, and I was all over the place, and I really had to focus in on one and give the one idea the attention it deserved. And I ended up with the idea that grew into to Docuvo. It was an idea that, I re that really resonated with me. It was a problem that I experienced myself so much, just a user frustration of where is that damn file? And why is it so difficult to find? And why can't I just review it on the screen? Or well, how am I going to read so many multiple files at the same time? And because of the limitations of current solutions, I was nothing more than just a glorified document monkey in the profession. That's all we were, really, just managing and tracking information for all different platforms. And so it was a problem that I just couldn't understand, especially with the waste that we produced, with the paper waste in particular, that we're still printing so much. And I just thought there has to be a better way of doing this. There has to be a simpler way of doing this. And I can see the solution. I can feel it. And it was really that and exploring that idea that I, I enjoyed so much more than anything I'd done in the previous five years. So it's just trying to realize that solution. So now I thought, okay, I've got an idea and I've got a path and I've got a new sense of purpose. I'm going to do a startup. So I left law around September last year, uh, a team of one in September. And quite quickly I realized uh, nothing can prepare you for a startup. There's so much to do, so much to learn, so much to plan for, short term, long term. The idea of being lean was completely new to me. And so one of the biggest challenges and milestones we had was, well, that I had, was just surrounding myself with the right people, the right team who can challenge and verify my, my assumptions. Sorry, the mic's going in and out, I think. Um, 
But since then, we've hit some really cool milestones. You know, we did our, we're doing our prototype, ready to launch in a month. We've been nominated for an award recently by Shell for Smarter Future. So lots of really good things and things we're really, really proud of. But we've had more, we've had just as much, if not more, lows. Uh, and it's really at those, those lows that those accomplishments you have in a startup, they're nice, but they don't help. And there's only one question that I, I, I find during those times is, why am I here? Why is this worth it? Why does this matter to me? And so we've had all kinds of lows, from bad hires to mistakes. And one of the, one of the biggest lows, actually, is dealing with how unreliable you become in doing a startup. Friends and family, they can't plan anything around me. I'm constantly having to change things. And it's incredibly frustrating for them. Uh, and I get frustrated, it's like, well, why can't you understand what I'm doing? And, and there's just a back and forth between them. Obviously, I, I need to pitch it to them in the same way you do investors. And actually, that reminds me of a recent story about, uh, but I recently experienced this with my five-year-old nephew. Now, my nephew and niece are the most important people to me in the world. And I've been seeing them less and less, which is very, very upsetting. And a couple of weeks ago, my nephew, he called me, it was around bedtime. And uh, he called me, and he calls me Mamo, so he calls me, and he's like, hello, Mamo, and I'm like, oh, hello, it's so nice to speak to you, and he's like, when am I going to see you? And I, I start apologizing to him, saying, oh, I'm so sorry, a new problem came up, I had to deal with this, and I really miss you, etc." And then he was quiet, he's like, okay, and then, then he said to me, he said to me, I have to go to bed now, but can you come over and then wake me up so I can give you a cuddle? And it just really just broke me. I was like, damn, why am I here? I need to rush home and see them too and just hug them for hours. Uh, and obviously I couldn't at the time, but it again made me think that question, why am I here? Why am I doing this? Why does this matter to me? And more importantly, I want him to understand this now. So actually I did set out to explain it to him, which is a fun experience, trying to explain your startup to a five-year-old, <laughs> trying to explain it in the simplest way. And I think I use Lego to help him understand. I'm trying to build something and there's no instructions. It's all in my head and I don't know what piece I need. And you know, it was working. It was working really good. So I don't know, he might be investing, we'll see. <laughs> it's a work in progress. But it was so nice just to share that with him and also figure out my message of why am I doing this? And again, that constant validation. So my question to you all, and it's something that I'm constantly asking myself, do you really know what you love? Do you really know what you're willing to do? Uh, and that's it. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>